Hi, I'm Eric Davies of Prelogic Software, one of the developers of EasyRTC. In this video, we're going to look at how to write a simple web RTC application using EasyRTC. Now, WebRTC is this new technology built into web browsers that allows users to share their webcams and their microphones and other data with each other peer-to-peer. -peer. That is to say, stuff goes from one browser to another browser without being relayed by a server and without the use of plugins. If this sounds magical, remember that magic always comes with a price, in this case, complexity. The API needed to set up that communication is a bit funky and there are minor differences between browsers. EasyRTC provides a client-side library that hides the API complexity and browser differences. It also provides a server-side system so that browsers can find each other and trade enough metadata to be able to establish peer-to-peer -peer communications. Now that we have the groundwork laid, let's jump in. We're going to start with a simple HTML page. The page has two important components, a div tag called contacts and a pair of video tags. The contacts div is going to serve as a container for the buttons used to dial up other peers. The video tags will be used to display the audio video streams from the local machine and from the remote machine. Our first step is to add some client-side libraries to the HTML file. Our application won't be calling the socket.io.js file directly, rather it is used by the easyrtc.js code. Once our application is loaded up, we'll want to connect to the web signaling server. We'll do so by adding an onload event handler to the body of our HTML code. We connect to the server using the init-managed method, which tells the server our application name. It also supplies the ID of a video object that will display the media stream from the local camera, a list of video objects for media streams from remote cameras, and a function to call when the connection succeeds. The onload event handler will also install a callback that will update the list of call buttons as other people connect and disconnect from the server. We'll see the code for that in the next slide. Our callback that handles changes to the list of people connected to the server gets passed a dictionary whose keys are the IDs of the people currently connected. All it needs to do is empty out the contacts div and then create a new button for each contact. When one of the contact buttons is pressed, it invokes the perform call method, passing it the ID of the caller. Perform call will hang up on any existing calls and then attempt to connect to the other party. This code would work as it stands, but there will be some formatting issues. The init manage code will automatically add a close button to the video object displaying the remote connection. To position that button correctly, the video object needs to be in its own div with a CSS position type of relative. The close button also needs some CSS to determine where it is positioned inside that div. The same CSS will suffice for multiple video objects. Here's our demo application actually running. 